Hey, 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 everybody. This podcast episode is called When Technology Makes You Want to Cry. So if you can relate, this is the podcast episode for you. I was feeling this way a couple of weeks ago and I just had to share it. So stick around. You're listening to Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Marketing Tips with Melissa Podcast, and now your host, Melissa Jakubovic. Okay, when technology makes you want to cry, what are we going to do? We are running an online business, so we know we have to deal with technology, and we know that there are no guarantees with technology. Technology is going to do what technology wants to do, and we've got to roll with the punches, especially if you want to be standing here many years from now saying, I am an online entrepreneur, because if you're going to give up at the drop of a hat because technology is frustrating you, you won't make it much further in this business. Your entire business is online, so everything you do has to be around technology. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that you have to be the one to do the technology. You don't have to code anything. You don't have to create your own funnels. You don't even have to set up your own email systems if you don't want to. You can always outsource that and there are great VAs that are ready and willing to help you. But you do have to understand that technology isn't going to always work the way that you want and that's okay. So when technology makes you want to cry, what do you do? Well, the first thing is to remember to be patient. You have to be patient because if you're getting really frustrated and you're impatient, it's only going to exasperate the situation. So the other day I went for my photo shoot and I took my phone with me and I use my phone all day long. I talk to my team on Voxer. We're always going back and forth. I'm sending emails from my phone. If I don't have my phone, my business isn't running. So my phone is a really big asset because it is a computer on the go and much smaller than my laptop. Not only that, I'm terrible at directions, terrible. And if I don't have my GPS, even though I've lived here my whole entire life, I will get lost, guaranteed. So I woke up that morning before the photo shoot, and yes, I have been to the location before, but that's irrelevant because I'm bad at directions. And I had to go old school. I had to go onto MapQuest. I had to research where I was going. I had to print out the directions. And I only made three U-turns on the way, so I call that a win <laughs> because it would have been more. But I didn't have my GPS with me on with my phone, and that is a huge issue for me. My phone was full of storage, and so it was stuck in the loop where if you use an Apple phone, you see there's an Apple there on the screen. When the iOS starts up, it stayed with the Apple on the screen all day long for eight hours. I got lost. There was a time during the day I needed my calculator. I couldn't communicate with my team. I couldn't communicate with my family. And it was very crazy. I had to spend an entire day driving from one store to another to try and find different methods to fix it because I needed it to turn on to double check that everything had been backed up because I also have important work files on my phone but the phone wouldn't even turn on. So it became an entire day event, which means I didn't work the entire day. There were people waiting for me and things to do. Luckily, it happened on the day of my photo shoot, so I didn't have any meetings with any clients that day, but I did have a lot of work that I needed to do, and it actually set me behind many, many days. I spent the whole day driving from one place to the other, and finally, on that same day, I found out that our welcome email to the group that had been sending out to everyone who comes to my Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs group. For six months, those people were getting the wrong email. They were getting the older version, and I could not believe it because we had set up all the technology, and I updated the newer email, and it was wonderful. And I found out that same day that for six months, all the new subscribers that have come into my group for six months were getting an old email, being sent to an old email portal we didn't even use anymore, and getting emails in an email series that weren't relevant at all. And it didn't even have our name change, which if you've been listening to this podcast a while or you're part of the Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs Group, you know that we changed the name of the group from the Magnetic Marketing Mastermind to the Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs Group earlier this year. Hey coaches and healers, it's time to feel supported in your business. Head on over to our free community to get access to my best resources for free. I'm talking marketing tips, business strategy, mindset, support, feedback, and so much more. Join now at spiritualwomenentrepreneurs.com. See you there. 
So the welcome email didn't even welcome them to the proper group name. How embarrassing is that? Very embarrassing. And we had set that up and tested it. So that's when I say technology doesn't always do what you want it to do. So that made me want to scream because that meant that half of what I was sending to these people made absolutely no sense. People also, because of this same email issue, were registering for an old workshop instead of going to the wait list. So there's a workshop that I used to run. We may bring it back, but it's not running now. And there's some email glitch where people are actually getting to the workshop group, which doesn't even exist anymore, instead of making it to the waitlist page. And they were connecting to our old Facebook group and they saw the old branding on our podcast because we have done a whole branding makeover over the last year. And so they were getting all this old stuff that doesn't even make sense anymore. So what I want you to take from this is I've been in business almost a decade and still technology has no guarantees. Things happen. Sometimes these things are out of your control. Even when you test them, we have technology errors, we have human errors, and we are dealing with humans and we are dealing with technology. So these are two things I can guarantee. There will be errors. And maybe it's embarrassing. I'm very embarrassed that six months worth of new subscribers are getting really old stuff that makes no sense. But we finally found out and we made the change and we fixed it. So you just have to kick yourself and then breathe through it and know that you are at least fixing it now so that it will be good moving forward. I spent days waiting for my phone. While I was spending a day waiting for my phone to get fixed and backed up and I went to the next place and I backed it up and actually two days later, I got the new phone and it wasn't working and I had to go. I was like a three-day adventure to get this phone to work. But you know what I did? Instead of stressing out, I sat down outside of the retail shop on a little outdoor patio sofa thing. I was super focused because I didn't have my phone. So I was really focused on what I was doing. I opened up my laptop. I was sitting in the gorgeous sun I was listening to the nice music that they were playing in this public place. And so it wasn't what I planned, but I searched for the positives in the day. And if you know me, I'm like a sunflower. I want to be in the sun. I want to be facing the sun. I want the sun shining down on me. So to listen to nice music, to sit in the relaxing sun, to not have to worry about whatever was happening on my phone at the time and just let it go. I couldn't be there. It was out of my control. So there was nothing I could do about it. So I didn't put my focus there. I put I put my focus on my laptop, I got some emails done, and I saw all the beautiful positives that happened. And the other thing is, you want to get help. So as soon as I saw there was an issue, I got my team on it right away. Even before I had a tech department back in the day, I would post in Facebook groups to find someone who could help me to solve the problem right away. So you just pop in and you're like, emergency, I have a technology emergency. Who can help me right now? This is the budget. This is what I need. And I used to get hundreds of responses and someone would fix it right away. So even if you don't have a whole tech department, a whole tech team, you could get the help you need by just asking. You don't have to have a long-term team member to sort out a problem. You just need to recognize that this is bigger than you and you ask for help. And like I started this episode, I'm going to repeat again, remember patience. Be patient. You'll get all the kinks worked out. And moving forward, it will all be smooth sailing. So if you've ever had technology make you want to cry, know that you're not alone. It's totally natural part of running an online business. And there are ways that you can navigate through this by keeping your mindset in check and getting the help that you need. Search for the positives and you'll be well on your way. Okay, I hope this helps and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Marketing Tips with Melissa podcast at www.marketingtipswithmelissa.com. Oh, wait, before you go, I've got a special invitation for you, so listen up. Join thousands of spiritual women, 
entrepreneurs, coaches, healers, and business owners in a cozy community to learn effective and aligned strategies to grow and scale your business through organic marketing and so much more. I'm inviting you to join my free community called the Spiritual Women Entrepreneurs to lift one another up in business, spirituality, finances, and emotional support. Visit spiritualwomenentrepreneurs.com. See you on the inside.